Good afternoon, folks, or should I say good morning? It's almost afternoon. This is Kimberly Jessica reporting in live today from Hollywood, California. And as you guys are aware, I'm always talking to amazing people that are doing great things in the world, and I'm really excited today to be talking to a young lady, and she has done some amazing things. She's been in the world of public relations. Think Olivia Pope. We're going there, folks. Think Olivia Pope. 25 plus years in public relations and marketing experience, counseling senior level executive, executive at Fortune 500 companies. She's a university professor. She teaches at the graduate and undergraduate level at NYU. She's a, she at U, UMass at Amherst. Hello, I'm from Massachusetts. Rutgers University and Farley Fairly Fairly Dickinson. University, SDU, who brings an academic and a business perspective to events. PR marketing influencer recognized by Sizen as one of the top 50 social media influencers in 2014. She was named one of the 10 top engagers in 2014 by Tracker. She, she an Air PR Tech Award. She won that. Uh, an honoree in 2014 and named among, among the top women who rock social media by top ranked online magazine in 2010. She's also an international keynote speaker in top of PR, branding, marketing, and social media communications. She's a five times published Prentice Hall and Financial Times press author who has been sharing research in business books since 2000 with titles that include Social Media and Public Relations, Putting the Public Back in Relations, PR 2.0, The New PR Toolkit, and Cyber Branding. She's a media junkie who's been blogging since 2007. And, I, I mean, I could go on and on. She's, she, she's been with PR, Stud Chat, Twitter, Community Co-Founder, Linda.com, Video Course Author, Internet Radio Personality, Host of Women Worldwide, Produced and Distributed by Social Media, Social Network Station. I could go on and on here. I mean, she has an MBA. She's been at this since 1988. She's done agency-wide before going into her own company in 1998. Now she's doing consulting and teaching She's and writing her books. She's like living the ultimate dream lifestyle in addition to, you know, being – she puts the P in the R. Seriously, she is that chick, and I, I, I'm loving her to pieces. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm so excited to bring forth today for you, Deirdre Brookenridge. How are you today, Deirdre? I hope I'm not butchering your name because, you know what, I hate people butchering my name. <laughs> well, no, and thank you so much for that wonderful introduction. I'm so happy to be on your show, Kimberly, and I'm feeling great today. Oh, awesome. This is, this is amazing. Deirdre, please, I mean, seriously, you know, you have, you're like the it girl in PR. Seriously, you, you have the, the fun shit thing going, you've got the professional business woman going, you've got the teacher thing going, you've got the corporate thing going, you've got the, you, you, you've got it all. And, and so please tell us what inspired you to start out in public relations when it wasn't something that was always discussed back then. Well, thank you so much for all of your kind words. Um, and PR, it's, it's, true. it's really interesting. <laughs> I, was, I was one of those um, students who kind of decided early on, this is what I want to do, and I, I really stuck with it. I fell in love with public relations because I started out loving to write. I mean, that was my passion. I didn't think I'd be writing books, but... I had heard that, you know, if you love to write and you wanted to work with the media, um, that PR and build relationships, that that was the way to go. And ever since I graduated, you know, way back when, Glassboro State College, uh, that's what I've been doing. And I've met the most incredible, incredible people. And I think that's what I feed on. I feed on intelligent, creative, wonderful people who, you know, thrive around others and kind of we all just create synergy together. So that's what PR is, those personal relationships too. Um, personal relationships. You know, I like that you said that because, well, it's, it's, it's personal relationships in the public eye. And, 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 you know, I like that you said that because I've never heard it quite that way before. It's personal relationships in the public eye. And, you know, you have the whole social media, you have the branding, you have the strategies. Tell us what are your thoughts right now from a public relations perspective on this, 
on this presidential election. Oh, my gosh. Like, seriously? <laughs> well, I how many no hours clue. do you have? Seriously. <laughs> I'm just like, yo. <laughs> yeah. like, I feel like Massachusetts. Right? You know, it's like, it's, yo. <laughs> it's like, mind-blowing. Literally. It's so literally. I, we've got the billionaire and we've got the, 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 the famous woman with the husband that's done some choice things in the past. And it's just oh like literally... God. It's scandal. It's scandal. It is. It's it's scandal. And and here's the thing. So, you know, you mentioned here I am in public relations since 1988. Let me tell you, the PR playbook, that rule book that we've been following for so long, boy, did that go out the window (laughs) when when this election started, when these candidates, you know, were nominated, and even before that. The, the rhetoric is nothing like I've ever seen before. No. And, right, uh, talk about... No, the rhetoric when is we talk, unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. And think about public relations and, and ethics and what I teach is, okay, first of all, accuracy, transparency, communication that benefits everyone, um, Whoa, what what are we seeing? None of that's happening though. None of that. Exactly. None of that's happening exactly. in this election. It's like you a, know, it's almost have, like a cat fight. It is. You have two different campaigns, very, very different. And because they are so different, it affects the, the messages <laughs> that they're mm-hmm. sending mm-hmm. out and how perceptions are being shaped. And you know, if you're a staunch supporter then it doesn't matter what the candidate says or does. You're going to love him or her no matter what. And everybody else who's on the fence is just trying to deal with this. And, and even within the parties themselves, there's, there's dissent. So not, not favorite. These are not the, the favorite candidates. So let's put it that way. No, I mean, I'm at a loss as you know, of, of who to vote for. I mean, I'm listening to things that, you know, uh, Donald is saying, and I'm, like, cringing. I'm like, dude, please mm-hmm. have someone help you talk. And then I listen to some of the things Hillary says. And like, but I'm like, do I really want more of that from the 90s? You know what I mean? It's like, oh, yes. my God. And then the scandal with Bill. And it's like, so they need a new public relations strategist. I mean, can you help them, Deirdre? I mean, can you get in there and just do some, just be the cleanup woman? Just clean up for us. Yeah, the, the cleanup <laughs> woman, it, that is not an, an easy job. Um, and I'll tell oh you, it's, it's looking at candidates who, you know, if you look at Trump first. So he is the candidate of change, right? He His messaging, um, which Take his America supporters, back. what's that? Take back our country. Yes, it's it's make America great again. America is first. We're going to build walls. We're going to focus on us. And, it, you know, we may not be working with our allies, so it doesn't matter if we scrap, you know, NATO. Um, we, we're going to focus on us, and we're going to exclude a, a whole bunch of different groups, but that's okay. And his base supporters love that. Anybody outside of that base, no, 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 that, does, that doesn't work. And, you know, for, for Hillary, she is more the running on the, listen, I – I am experienced. I've done this, right, for how many years? Uh, She's been in it 30 years. We're stronger together. We're going to work with our allies. We're going to embrace all people. But there's work to do. Um, She does show more positive, you know, with her messaging. When you think about about the, the convention, that was much more positive. And Donald Trump has that doom and gloom, but I'm going to change it. And you know what? But no matter what, there's perceptions around both of trust issues, lack of transparency, Mm -hmm. um, whether you're talking about his taxes, her foundation, now his foundation. It's crazy. Her emails and the email thing and the FBI and the Benzai. And it's like, ah, who do I – I mean, I'm a veteran, too, so it's like, okay, what happened with that? You know what I mean? What happened with those four seals? I mean, I'm a veteran. I come from a family of veterans. I'm a product of the Vietnam War. You know what I mean? So how does that work? And 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 it, with Donald Trump, it's like it's only it's only America for certain people. So it's like, dude, how do we just like look at everyone? Because I'm an immigrant. I came here from Panama. 
So, right. you know, and I served in the military. So is America just apple pie and, you know, ice cream and Joe Six Pack? Or is America all people that came through Ellis Island? Did you forget about them? You know what I mean? So it's like, yes. okay, how do we make this work? Because if I'm not, well, I'll, if I'll I'm not a you. picture of it, I don't, I'm not included. You know, in, in order for Trump to uh, con- to go down a better path, now, I don't know if they're going to get a bump out of the VP debate last night with Kane and, and Pence. They did say Pence oh, won the yeah. debate. But, you know, for Trump moving forward, um, he would have to literally stay on teleprompter for everything, which doesn't work mm. for him. Clearly, he loves those rallies, and those rallies are when he goes off script. He feeds off of crowds, and that's where he gets into this rhetoric that makes so many people uncomfortable and alienates groups. And you kind of wonder, what, what, you know, is it true? Can he walk down Fifth Avenue and shoot someone? And his supporters would not even care. Uh, so he's got big challenges. If he's going to expand mm-hmm. beyond that base, he really has to stay very measured. It's all about his temperament, and he's got to prove, if he can, <laughs> that he's got the right mm-hmm. temperament. And as for Hillary, um, she can't get down the rabbit hole. She can't go negative. She has to stay positive, and she has to show that she her experience is measured and she has the ability to lead on day one because she understands and and she does need to talk more about economy and education and health care and some of the things that she's really done so people understand that what she's done in the past other than scandals so mm. i'll tell you it's going to be all i think about when i look at her scandals and all I can yeah. remember when I look at Donald is Ivanka and how she was hurt by, you know, uh, the, you know, the other lady that came in in the 90s. I know there's Melania, there's Ivanka, and then, or Ivana, then there's Melania, and then there's... Marla Maples. Marla Maples. Oh, my God. I so remember. Like, all I remember is Marla Maples really hurt this lady. That's all I remember. And I remember being, you know, in the 90s, like, oh, my God, how could Marla Maples hurt another woman that way? That's all I remember. That's horrible to remember someone from a, a sex and a, and a, a marriage scandal. But then when I think about right. Phil, it's like, oh, man, you just, like, ruined this 18-year-old girl's life. You know what I mean? And you sit on the... Oh, it's all and, and played it out. It's all scandal, Deirdre. I know, and, and, and Kimberly, social media is not kind. <laughs> you know what no, I mean? you're it is brutal. not kind to candidates. Um, I keep a really close eye on Twitter. I'm watching uh, Trump's feed. I'm, you know, the, I'm like kind of searching anybody who's talking about him. I'm searching anybody who's talking about Hillary. I'm watching that. I'm watching the Never Trump. I'm watching, you know, hashtag Never Trump. I'm watching hashtag Crooked Hillary. Oh my gosh. Mm. It's like you cannot even keep up Hillary. with Hillary. Oh my God. I'm, that's the first time I've ever heard of that one. Hashtag. What do you think of? All this Black Lives Matter and All Lives Matter and Bota and the Latino Lives Matter. And it's like, do you feel that Trump, and I'm just going to ask you from a public relations perspective, and, you know, I know you have to kind of stay neutral. That's what PR people do. They, 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 they express what the people are saying in a very neutral tone. So it's understandable and receivable. Which well, I, I will tell you. Do you feel will support the negativity that's coming from the Black Lives Matter, the All Lives Matter, the Latina both side, you know, all that stuff. It's like such a divided country right now. It is a divided what are your country. Thoughts on that? And I think you have to bring people together. And you don't mm-hmm. bring people together when you lump it all together. Um, and, and maybe this is just my, my personal, but – all lives matter. You can't get to all lives matter until you get to the heart of each group and what matters to them. And I think that there is a lot of racial divide and tension. And we need a candidate who is going to really listen. And I don't think, and, and now this is, you know, my, my personal opinion, that more law enforcement and, you know, anything that's coming out around stop and frisk, I don't think that's the way to go. Wow. So who do you think would be the ideal candidate to address? 
these well, groups and their issues. We have so two funny. running right you know, now. People say what they want to say. You know what I mean? Listen, people can say yeah, what I, they want to say to sound great. They can say, and it, at the end of the day, what sticks with your brand is what you do. But you give a glimpse of yourself and your character through all of the things that you say and do over the years. So I think that people should take a really hard look at some of the things that have been said and done and candidates who are not sensitive to issues and who are quick to tweet and get um, opinions and not facts and who don't know circumstances, that is not good. I think you need a much more measured tone and, um, you know, that, that, that is going to, um, I think, be something that we're all going to have to ask and whoever is elected and whoever, whichever way you vote, you need to be accountable for that. Wow, I, I tell you, we could talk for days. Tell us, and is there anything coming up that you want the world to know? And then quickly, if you can tell us how we can get in touch with you, get your products, and 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 learn more about you. Oh my gosh! Well, well, thank you. So, I would love the world to know um, that I have a, a a podcast show that's relatively new. I guess we've been I've been podcasting now for over a year. It's called Women Worldwide. And we have the most incredible women and now men coming on the show. And if anybody is interested in checking out the guests and listening, we are on iTunes, but you can check out the website. It's womenworldwideshow.com. And if anybody wants to get in touch with me, oh, my gosh, I am on Twitter. I'm at D Breckenridge, and Breckenridge is B-R-E-A-K. E-N-R-I-D-G-E. And you can also check out my author website at DeirdreBreckenridge.com. Well, Deirdre, you are doing some amazing things, and I'm so happy that we had the opportunity to interview with you today. You're an amazing human being, and I want to hear more about you. You've done some amazing things, and I can't wait to talk to you again. Oh, well, Kimberly, thank you so much. I would love to chat with you anytime. This has been a great discussion. Can't oh my enough. gosh, I feel like I could talk to you for hours. Okay, I well, could talk you know to you what? For hours. Yeah, yeah, this is, this is just fun. I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm going to go follow her on Twitter now and I'm going to go see what she's doing and, and learn more about her. I mean, you need to be in the news more talking about this whole presidential thing because I even got a better understanding talking to you myself. So I'm so honored that I got the opportunity to interview with you today and, and I just, I can't wait to hear from you again, Deirdre. Well, thank you, and I'm honored to be on your show, and I can't wait to chat again. Anytime. You let me know. Thank you so much for interviewing with us. This is Kimberly Jessica reporting in live today from Huffington Post. We just interviewed with, with the wonderful Deirdre. She's a PR uh, consultant. She's been doing PR since 88. She gave us some great information about the presidential campaign and about Hillary Clinton, and it really even helped me put in perspective of who I really want to vote for. I won't say that out loud because I was really struggling with that, but I love the fact that she was sensitive to everything that was going on in America with everyone and their issues. That's what a public relations professional does. She's the other Olivia Pope. That's what I'm going to dub her, the other Olivia Pope. Deirdre, again, thank you so much for interviewing with us today. Thank you, Kimberly. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much. Take care and have a great day. Thanks. You too. Take care. Yes, ma'am. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.